How did William Samoe Araputo manage to defeat a combined force of President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta then and Raila Amolo Odinga? The answer to that is very simple. Strategy and focus. After the 2013 general election, William Ruto focused all his energy towards 2022 general election. And after the handshake, William Ruto knew so well that Uru Kenyatta was going to betray him and that Uru Kenyatta was going to support Raila Morodinga. So he came up with a very clear strategy. His strategy, number one, was to incite the Kikuyu nation against Raila Amolo Dinga and Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. And he did that successfully. His second strategy was propaganda. William Ruto is very good at propaganda. He sustained it after the handshake. And again, the Jubilee government didn't really perform the way it was expected. Remember, we had the COVID, we had other factors. He took advantage of those factors. And William Ruto also had a clear strategy. The strategy of, mes of uh, messaging, something which the Azimio team actually lacked. So he managed to win. And William Ruto is going to defend his seat in 2027. Which begs the question, can he repeat the same in 2027? My answer to that is going to depend on very many factors. But going by the history of this country, Mwikibaki won the presidency. Second time he was defeated, but he never left seat. He handed over to Uhuru Kenyatta, who served two terms. William Ruto can only make history as the first sitting president to lose election in Kenya. Even Moi never lost an election in this country until the time he sponsored Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. But in politics, so many factors, I mean, but in politics, there are many factors which can affect the outcome of the elections. So William Ruto is clearly now coming up with the new strategies towards 2027 general election because the dynamics of 2017 election are different completely. So he's drafting new strategy. His first strategy, and by the way, by the way, before we get into all those, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second, only a second. If you are watching it for the first time, or if you normally watch the channel, but you are not yet subscribed, I want you just to take a second, press that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without our support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, let us look at the new strategies which William Ruto is currently developing. Number one is a mega political party. For those who have been following William Ruto since he formed his uh, URP, after falling out with Raila Odinga in ODM, William Ruto has always been keen on forming a major political party. URP was initially formed as a pastoralist party. The idea was to bring all those pastoralist communities together. After the, 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 the merger with, the, I mean, after the coalition ag agreement with the TNA, William Ruto dreamt of having a big political party called Jubilee Party. Ultimately, he ended up forming Jubilee Party, and that Jubilee Party became the biggest political party between 2017 and 2022. But Uru Kenyatta destroyed Jubilee Party. Right now, William Ruto has already issued notice to Kenya Kwanza coalition partners that they want to form a mega political party. And that party will not change its name. It will be the United Democratic Alliance Party. Already, based on what I'm reading, Ford Kenya is going to collapse. NC Party is going to collapse with the appointment of Mota Waitangula, with the appointment of uh, Mudavadi. Mandeleo Chap Chap is going to collapse. Again, the, the, the PA Party is going to collapse. Chamacha Kazi, for, belonging to Moses Korea, has already collapsed. So he has this vision of having 
a mega political party. The advantage is uh, he believes he is going to derive from this major political party is that they will not there will be no competition. So that if they are in a Western Kenya, they can sell Western Kenya as a mega political party. The challenge, for example, he had in Western was that he had the UDA, which was a bit strong. Then there was also NC party, which was also competitive. Then there was ODM. So ultimately, at the end of the day, their, their constituencies were ODM benefited. You go to cost the same. So he wants to come up with a mega political party. You can imagine the day William Ruto will call a major meeting of Kenya Kwanza political parties. And then they announce a formation of a major political party. So that is his first strategy. Whether that strategy is going to work is something which I still can't tell. Number two is the war on corruption. William Ruto understands one thing. That he was branded the most corrupt individual in the country under Lada Brother. I'm told William Ruto has told his cabinet secretaries that moving forward, none of them is going to be allowed to participate in corruption. And should you find yourself in corrupt activities, then you'll have to blame yourself. William Ruto saw an opportunity through a window which President Ruth Kenyatta created for him during the handshake. The COVID scandal. Let me tell you, the only corruption which William Ruto and his brigades could talk about was that COVID scandal. If Uru and his team had not allowed that COVID scandal to emerge, I am sure and certain that probably they wouldn't have managed to, to tie Azimio with corruption. And that's how they evaded the issue of corruption. Remember, William Ruto could not even in his manifesto talk about corruption. So he has decided deliberately that in the first term of his government, anybody who will be caught stealing will have no option but to go home. So that he can build that confidence. So that if they will be eating, that eating will be in the second term, not in the first. That's something I'm told he has told his people clearly. His third strategy is the Hustlers Fund. You know, currently, the entire world is facing serious challenges in terms of economy. Majority of companies are folding, even in this country. So there are no job opportunities. Uhuru Kenyatta created Kazi Mutani. William Ruto has folded Kazi Mutani. So he has been under a lot of pressure. But this is what William Ruto is planning to do with the Hustlers Fund. William Ruto is strategically planning to implement the Hustlers Funds in the second year of his government. So that by the third year, Hustlers Funds will be felt. It will be given to people. In the fourth year and the fifth year, it will be given to so many youth, so many women group. So that as you go to the election, then you'll be told you have hustlers funds, 200,000. If you don't vote for Ruto, someone else will come and you'll be under a lot of pressure to pay. So he's planning to use these hustlers funds to put money in the hands of hustlers just towards the tail end of his campaign. So if you're a hustler and you are expecting to have uh, this fund help you in the first term, I mean in the first year of uh, Kenya Kwanzaa, forget. What is going to happen in, in December is that they are going to officially launch it. Then framework and you know all those processes putting up everything. Then the, the access will be very strict. They want to try first of all, roll it out. See if it can really work. But the idea is I, I, I mean avail these funds to hustlers towards the second term. I mean towards the tail end of the rule. Number four is Ukambani. If there's an area which is giving William Ruto serious political headache, is Ukambani. Last election, William Ruto knew that Ukambani was finally going to slide to his side. Surprisingly, Kalonzo Musioka carried the day. This time around, Kalonzo Musioka has three governors from Ukambani. 
in the last election he didn't have a single governor from Mkambani, which made work very difficult for him. Raila Odinga would simply go to Ngilu, organize a meeting there. You know, Raila Odinga would simply call Alfred, I mean, uh, Professor Kivutha Kibwana, organize a meeting there. Alfred Mutua would organize a meeting, even without Kalonzo Musioka in uh, Machakos. So William Ruto is currently focusing on Mukambani for two main reasons. Number one, Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. In case Raila Odinga is going to endorse Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, Ukambani will be out of reach for William Ruto. And that's why William Ruto is really monitoring the developments in Azimio as they unfold currently. Because you should change Kalonzo, he'll be breathing. Then, even if Raila Odinga will should change Kalonzo Musioka, there is a chance that Kalonzo Musioka will be on the ballot. If Kalonzo Musioka will be on the ballot, Raila Odinga will be on the ballot, you can rest assured that there's a possibility that Ukambani will vote as a block for their man. They've, proved, they've proven that in the past, even in the last election. So that will deny William Ruto. Like if you look at the figures he got in the last election, Ukambani gave him some votes. And the, the problem he has is that Ukambani is spread, you know, northeastern coast, this good percentage of Kamba votes. So William Ruto is going to focus more on Ukambani votes. And that would mean even sponsoring a fallout between Kalonzo and Raila Odinga. So I want you to monitor the activities happening in uh, Azimio. And lastly, is isolate Raila Molodinga. William Ruto intends to try as much as he can to isolate Raila Molodinga so that Raila Odinga will remain as if he's only the leader for the Luo Nation. And the truth is, Western Kenya, coastal region, and uh, Luo Nation are still hopeful of Raila Odinga's presidency. So if Raila Odinga can consolidate that support base, then William Ruto is worried because, of course, uh, he's facing a challenge that his government might actually face this serious recession which is coming up in the, in the entire world and Kenya is going to be affected. Just the way he gave Uru problems with the COVID, that's the same way Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga are going to give him problems. So they're giving him six months. So let us wait and see. But I think William Ruto is going to try as much as possible to isolate Raila Amolo Odinga so that Raila Odinga can remain just as Raila Amolo Odinga. You will not see them, you will not hear them trying to attack any other person other than Raila Amolo Odinga. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye.